Um, previously, we have been dealing with competitive markets or markets without economics of scale. Uh, in a competitive market, producers take price as given, uh, and then they decide how much they want to sell. Uh, when economics of scales ex uh, and, uh, happens, or when economics of scales are present, uh, then competitive models break down. So if you are the only producer, or if you are the monopoly seller in the market, then you basically have some price setting power. You can decide how much uh, you want to sell your uh, product for instead of you take price as given. So we're going to use a simple example to illustrate price setting with monopoly power. Uh, in particular, we are going to assume some type of a linear demand curve, where demand for your product is comes in the form of A minus B times P. So you can think of you can think about yourself as the only ice cream vendor in a kindergarten, and the A is the amount of total the, the total number of students in this kindergarten. Let's say a hundred. Then what is how many of the kids are going to buy your ice cream? Or what is the demand for your ice cream? Well, that kind of depends on how many kids there are to start with, which is a hundred. It also depends on your the price you set for your ice cream. Let's say if your ice cream costs nothing, or if price in P is nothing, then all of the 100 students are going to buy your ice cream. So demand is 100. And this parameter B measures, if you increase the price of your ice cream by a dollar, how many of the students you're going to lose? So for example, if B is equal to 1, then for every dollar of raise in the price, you're going to lose one student. So if you set price P to be zero, demand is equal to 100. Everyone buys your ice cream. If you set price P equal to one, you're going to lose one student. So uh, demand for ice cream is 99 and so on. Um, sometimes demand can be more sensitive to price. So let's say um, B is equal to two. That means for every dollar raised in ice cream price, you're going to lose two students. So if price is equal to one, you only get a demand. That's 98. So that is an example of a linear demand function. Q that's equal to A minus BP, where A uh, measures the entire customer pool, like how many students there are in total. And a B measures how sensitive these customers are to uh, the change in price. And from this demand function, Q equal to A minus BP, we can solve it for P in terms of Q. So that gave us some P equal to A divided by B minus Q divided by B um, uh, from some algebraic simplification. 